So in the previous video, I showed you how to calculate the magnetic moments of the uh, magnet, the cylinder magnet that we um, put into the um, MagPyLib software. We use the MagPyLib Python software to generate the magnetic moments and I stored them in a file. And this is what the file looks like. It's just a text file, a very simple text file. The first three values are the x, y, z coordinate relative to the magnet. And the last three values are the i, j, k values, uh, which are basically the, the magnetic moment, which determines the orientation of the nanoparticles, of the pseudo um, iron filings, if you want to call them that, but on a very small scale. Um, it uh, tells the alignment and it also uh, gives us an idea of the strength of the magnetic field in that location. So this is what the uh, what my Python code, um, let's see if I still have that here. This is what my Python code uh, generated was this file right here. So the next thing I did was I loaded the um, text file into my software to generate the cylinders. And so um, this is the same software uh, base, code base that I use to generate the, all of the animations that I do uh, for Yonel Dinyu, for example. And so all of the ether circulation models were uh, generated using similar software. And so I use this software. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I do want to point out that I am using my 4x4 matrix quaternion uh, implementation in order to orient the magnetic moments, which I load in from the text file. And so uh, I will cut and paste this code uh, into the description so you can see, but basically what I'm doing is I am uh, taking two points, I am arbitrarily placing two points uh, into the model, and I am uh, orienting those two points. So those two points are the endpoints of the cylinder that I'm going to generate. Okay, so I take these two points, which I place um, in a vertical uh, orientation, and then I transform them through the quaternion using the normalized um, vector, which I normalize right here. So I take the i, j, k, divide each by the strength to get the normalized vector, and that is what I use to orient my cylinder. And then I, um, I uh, set up, the cylinder is really just a tube, so I pass in those points to generate the tube, and then I add that to my output. And then what I do once the model is built, so when all the cylinders are added to my model, I save it as an STL file, and that is what I load into, um, into Blender. Okay, so uh, this is the code I use after I, after I output all the files, uh, all the magnetic moments to a text file. I run it through my, my program. I generate the model, which is, the, which is to simulate the nanoparticles in a very thin layer um, in the ferrocell uh, and uh, with the correct magnetic moments for the magnet that I am using. But before we have a look at this in Blender, I want to show you what my model looks like in a program called MeshLab. Now, MeshLab is a program that I use to investigate my 3D models after I build them. I can apply different filters to them or different um, shaders to them. So here I have a shader that makes it look a little bit like gold. And so what I want to show you here is that as I move this model around, Okay, the first, uh, first thing I want to show you here is that you can see that this is a very thin, not as thin as it would be for, uh, you know, the actual ferro cell, but what I generated was a very, very thin layer of nano needles that are oriented based on the magnetic moments of the magnet that it was placed around. 
the virtual magnetic moment. But what I want to show you is when I look at it, when you look at it from this view, okay, when you look at it from this view, the light is coming from my direction towards the screen, okay. When you look at it from this view, you can see that it looks very much like, um, like a little, like a torus. Okay, when you maneuver it around like this, it looks very 3D. Um, and when you zoom into it, you can see a similar thing. And so if I look at it from the side, it almost looks like there is a big, you know, big bump right here. Okay, if I zoom in, it re this looks like a very large, you know, um, hole of some sort when uh, it looks very 3D to me kind of like a hologram. One might call it a hologram, but in reality, okay, let's zoom in on these. You can see the, um, the close-up of the uh, needles that I placed that are oriented to the magnetic moments. Um, and when I zoom out, you can see, you know, it looks like that. And so it does very look very much like a torus. I could see how some people might mistake this for a torus. As I zoom around, it really does kind of look like a torus. It's just like when you take the, the ferrocell and you hold it in your hand and you move it in different orientations, um, you get this sort of 3D holographic effect, um, which Ken talks about a lot. And uh, But it is really just an optical illusion because in reality, the ferrofluid is just a thin layer between the two pieces of glass and it is not 3D. So, so that this explains how you could get that kind of a 3D effect um, from the orientation of the nano needles in the ferrofluid. In here, it look it, in the middle here. It might look like a dimple. You might see, oh, there's a, a indentation. Ken has talked about that as well. And of course, it is merely an optical illusion uh, based on the uh, how the lights are placed. And um, you can see that, it, you know, there is no thickness to this model. But depending on where you play, place the lights, uh, you're going to maybe see a holographic-like 3D effect.